The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Anyway, it's got all good to see a great attendance here today. Uh, we've, got, we've got a really fascinating thing on what happens to your eyes as they age and what you can do about it, which is of interest to people at any age, Dr. Pundit's here. So even if you're like 20 years old, you still want interest in what's going to happen to your eyes as you get older. So, Patia City Expat Club, the greatest expat club in the known universe. Pleased to welcome you here. And we have a special guest who I'll introduce later. Uh, anyway, uh, could you please turn off your phones or turn them to vibrate? Also, please do not surf the web while the people are talking. It's, it takes a lot of effort to, to a, put together a talk and it's really, really rude to surf the web while we're giving a talk. Multitasking is a myth. Is there, not, is there anybody out there who has not introduced themselves before? Do we have mic runners in place? Where's Albert? Albert, you got your mic? You've got a phone. <laughs> yeah, I've got the mic here, but I'm looking for uh, Stuart, who's got the other mic, but I can't find him. He's probably out getting his blood pressure taken. Yeah. yeah. All right, has any, anybody not introduced themselves before? Would like to say hello? Oh, we've got Fred down here. My Just name. here. Albert? And uh, I'd like... What, 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 wait, Peter, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, Stuart is here now. Uh, Stuart. Good on you, Stuart. Yeah. Stuart. Yeah. Can we get... Uh, we get Peter to, oh, we got, it's all here, it's all on this side. Fred here. That's what happens when uh, people get their blood pressure taken. Uh, all the blood rushes away from their brain. Right, my, name brain. Is, my name is Fred Rattinger, and I was born in Michigan. Uh, grandmother was a nanny for the Ford family. Uh, probably the last troubleshooter for American Made Copier Company. I fixed them when the other guys couldn't fix them. Uh, and I live in Missouri now. Uh, I got a lead ball pass for 30 days where, they, where I killed a bunch of wild rabbits and had them check for lead because they can shoot shotgun shell lead. America's in love with, with guns. And the leads had 200 times more lead. The rabbits had 200 times more lead than the domestics, which basically put the wild rabbits on birth control. But that only lasted 30 days, so Trump changed the law. It's a new form of birth control. Thank you, Fred. I hope you'll come back another time. Thank you for introducing yourself. Round of applause for Fred. Over here. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Benja Karamsi. I'm working at Light Up Corporation in Sinacha. I'm a president of Toastmaster Sinacha. Right on. All right, so you're going to get a talk here sometime, yeah? The Toastmaster. Yeah? Well, welcome. Okay. Very, very pleased to see Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Right. Well, while we're doing instructions, Stewie, screws, can you give the microphone to Peter from Patia Mail? You don't get in here very often. You might get a few words out of here. Stand up and introduce yourself. Oh, enough. Yeah. You go, Pete. Well, so, obviously, we have a very special relationship with Patty and Mal. This is because of Peter. Thanks, Lex. My name is Pratip Singh Malhotra. It's a very Thai Indian name. I am Indian. I was born in Pisanulok. That's in Thailand. So I'm a Thai. My parents, or actually my grandparents, because he's telling his life story with the rabbit so. I hope this is not a rabbit talking. There's nothing more than a rabbit. <laughs> um, lived here all my life, of course. Went to an Irish Catholic school in India. That's why they taught me the English. Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> um, let's see. Finished school, and this was back in 1967. My father opened up a shop, a tailor shop, right opposite Udupau Air Base, where I started my career as uh, owning a tailor shop and a detailing work for the Americans for many, many years. An Indian extra person doing tailoring, that seems very groundbreaking. Well, uh, we hired Thais and Vietnamese to do the sewing. We just made money. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to Bangkok. 
came back to Padilla after the war because uh, when, when all the Americans left around 75, we needed a place to go set up business because uh, we were in this, in this business, we had to go on. So Padilla and Bangkok was the main places that most of the businesses from around the American bases uh, had to go. Uh, from Udon, Udon, Ubon, Karat, and wherever else that we uh, the Konpanov, a lot of them. So we chose Bangkok, and from Bangkok we started to do business with the Germans. We found out that the Germans spent only a few days in Bangkok before they came to Padilla. So we came down to Paddy and set up shop here back in 75. So I've been here that long, 43 years, constantly in Paddy. 25 years ago, I'm almost finished. 25 years ago, I decided that we needed an English language newspaper. See, I have a lot of contacts with foreigners, with foreigners, let you see. And people were coming to live in our area, the Eastern Seaboard. There was no news, there was no information. And me having such a close relationship with foreigners, I thought it would be a good idea to have a newspaper, so we set it up. I thought maybe I could do the television business and have somebody run the paper, but that didn't work. So I had to jump in and take over, and 25 years later, I'm here. Still going, still going, I wouldn't say strong. The media business is a tough business at the moment, especially the print, but we've jumped into the digital media also. So anyway, I was very happy to see the big sign up there, Penny of Mail, gives away free newspapers. And I appreciate that because we print so many and we can't sell them all. So we thought we'd just give them away. So thank you for taking your paper and reading the paper. And I'll be back. I'll be back. You turn the walls. He may not be here, but he adds a lot, but he adds a tremendous amount to the club uh, through the Patty Mail and stuff. We're really grateful for that. Thank you, Peter. Uh, now, talking about the club, it, the most important person in the club is our fundraiser, Judith, who sells the memberships. It's our only source of support. It's only 400 baht a year. Uh, so please join the club. There's also... Oh, you haven't said hello. Liz, you should say hello. He's Aussie. Just stand up, mate. Hello, I'm Les Niders from Capital TV in Bangkok. I actually uh, arrived in Thailand from Brisbane, Australia in 1993. And I found Hatia when um, I started looking for a place to have some fun outside of Bangkok and I became a member of the Varuna Yacht Club. And out of that, I started finding that there were some great opportunities in my business. I have a TV production company and I make video production as well. And for many years, I used to, we used to work together with Paddy and Mail, etc. And we had a TV program called Paddy and Mail. Oh, Paddy, Paddy and Plus, sorry. Yeah, it was called Paddy and Mail Plus at that time, <laughs> yes. And um, I also have a TV program called Destination Thailand, which has been airing for many years um, on, on, on local cable, you know, on True Vision, etc. It's not on air at the moment, but we were on air for many years. And um, I have a website now uh, called Destination Thailand. I have just moved to Padia after living in Bangkok since 93, so I'm happy to meet all the local Padia people. So I hope we can meet up another time. Thank you. Well, welcome. Well, we hope you have to see much more of you. So, moving on to the main event for the day. Thank you all those people who introduced themselves. I think we're done. Anybody else? Want to put their hand up? Excellent. All right, uh, I think we're done for the, that, and we're going to move on to the main event for the day and our disclaimer. You ready? The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation, and our speakers are volunteers. The club, as such, assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. And the speaker today is, we're very lucky, Dr. Pundit Lithanaporn from uh, Bangkok Patia Hospital. And he's going to give a talk, which I helped, which Tanya helped arrange, of course, called What Happens to Your Eyes As You Age and What You Can Do About It which of interest to even you young people out there, you need to know this, right? Because it's going to, you know. Dr. Puddin's speciality is ophthalmology, 
cornea and refractive surgery. He doesn't do suicide. He received his Doctor of Medicine in 2007 from the Faculty of Medicine, King Chulalongkorn Chula Chula University in 2012. He received a diploma diploma from the Typhoid or Ophthalmology Faculty of Medicine, Prince Songkla University, followed in 2013 with Certificate of Fellowship in Corns and Refractive Surgery, Department of Ophthalmology, King Chuan Corn Memorial University. So I'm really pleased, a big round of applause to welcome Dr. Punti. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Vadivrishna Porn. I'm glad to be here. Uh -huh. Today, we will talk about what is the most common problem in elderly eye. No one wants to be old, but what happens when we get old in, your, in our eye? Three most common blindness in the elder people. First is the cataract. Second is the macular degeneration. And third is the glaucoma. First, we will talk about the cataract, the most common. Everyone has to be the cataract once in their lifetime. What is the cataract? Cataract is a lens that is not good. This is the lens in our eye. When we were born, when we were young, the lens is clear, like nothing. We cannot see the lens at all. Uh -huh. The lens, just like the glasses, make, me, make you see everything clear. The good lens should let the, let the light come to the lens and focus exactly on the retina, make you see everything good. However, when we grow older, what happens? This is when we were young, the lens is white and clear. When we grow older, the lens is not clear anymore. It's brown and hazy. The lens normal should be clear, but we grow older, the lens is hazy, not clear anymore. The lens that hazy prevent the light that come into the retina, make the vision got worse day by day. Normal eyesight should be sharp and clear. With the cataract, it's like a foggy. You cannot see anything at all. Uh -huh. What not only is made difficult to see, it can create M, uh, M Grand and Harrow. When you drive a car at night, you see this. This is Grand and Harrow. It's more very difficult to drive a car at night with a cataract. Or sometimes you can see double vision like this with a cataract. Uh, the early symptoms that you cannot see usually present at night first and followed by day because at night not enough light to penetrate the cataract. What is the cause of the cataract? The first, when we were born, some baby have the cataract since we were born. Oh, very unlucky. The second is the when we grow older, we call it senile cataract. This is the most common cause of the cataract. You see, the lens is not clear now. The lens is hazy and cloudy. Uh, we have a staging of the cataract uh -huh, from the early stage to the final stage that the light cannot penetrate at all. Uh -huh. This is the stage of the cataract. First, it's clear and more buried when crowded, and final, you cannot see it all like brightness. And we have a study: over seventy percent, and the person at seventy-five years old have a cataract. Uh -huh. Actually, this study we cut at the cataract grade two, but if we see about cataract grade one or every cataract, almost everyone got the cataract. What is the risk factor if you don't want to be the cataract? First, not get old, which is impossible. <laughs> Second is smoking. And <laughs> uh, smoking and not to drink the alcohol. This speed up the process of the cataract, especially smoking. Uh -huh. uh, diabetes or high myopia will cause the cataract and excessive exposure of the sunlight can speed up the cataract. Not only that, sometimes the cataract not come with aging, it comes with disease. Like a diabetes or steroid user, very long time or high myopia that come to the cataract, that is not quite good. 
The last is the injury. If you have an injury, when the trauma, when the motorcycle accident or car accident, it result in the cataract and you cannot see. What can we do about the cataract? The cataract is the lens is not good, so we get the bad lens out and put the new clear lens in. Uh, we now we have a uh, two kind of the operation. First is the uh, ECCE. It's like get the whole lens out and put the new lens in. And the second is the phago emulsification. Uh, we cut the small wound and then we extract the lens with the instrument uh, and then put the new lens in in the small wound like this. Uh, the first is the ECCE that I talk about. It's the old surgery now that we take the whole lens out and put the new clear lens in. Absolutely, it take the whole lens out, the wound is wrong, you see, and we need many stitch here and take the longer time. This is the easiest procedure. Uh, the disadvantage is the large wound make its long recovery period. And in new astigmatism or cylinder after surgery, need stitch off several times like this. So now in nowadays, usually we do the phago emulsification. However, ECCE have a price when the lens is a final stage and the instrument cannot cut it at all. We have to get the whole new whole one out. The phago emulsification is the we cut a, only the small wool get the instrument in, extract all lens out, and put the new clear lens in, and make the dual vision better again. This is the emulsification, you see. The wound is small, usually no need for the stitch, or only one stitch at most. So the small wound make fast recovery period. Less than stigmatism because no stitch, uh -huh. and no need for stitch off, or only stitch off at one time. Okay, now we talk about what is the lens we use. Not normal, we use the monofocal lens. Monofocal, mono is one, mean that you can see one distance good. Like you should to see, to, to see far good, only wear the glasses and near. This is the monofocal lens, it's a conventional lens. Next, we have a multifocal lens. Multifocal lens is a link like this. Uh -huh. It's divide the light that come to see far, to see intermediate, and about to see near. So now, multifocal lens, you can see three distance, far, intermediate, and about computer screen, and near. Uh -huh. You see, far, you can see. Near, when you read it, you also can see with this lens. You can see far away, you can see intermediate about this or computer screen, and you can see near. Wow, this is good. So, what is the downside of this lens? First, 80% no need glasses after surgery. 80%, not 100%. One, 10 to 20% need some glasses for specific activity, like working at the computer, or when you're reading in the dim light. Uh -huh. And last, everyone with this lens increase cry and halo. Especially when you drive car at night, you will see like this. So, uh, usually, 80% can adapt it in six months. Uh -huh. Only 10% tell that it's still difficult to drive a car at night with this lens. This lens look quite good, but not fit to all patients. First, patient that expectation sharp vision every distance, not okay. If you want sharp distance every, you have to choose more focal and wear the glasses when you're reading. Uh -huh. Second, dependent at night vision because this lens is divine light, so. Pilot, truck driver, everyone that driving at night a lot, not suitable with this lens. The second is with the patient with eye disease, any eye disease like uh, uh, the cornea is not good, have a diabetes in your retina, or have the glaucoma, not advised to this lens because the 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 light is not enough for you to see perfectly. 
Okay, next we talk about the macular degeneration, the second one. Macular degeneration. Uh, what is the macular degeneration? Last time, uh, last session, cataract is this at the left. This is this in the retina. This is the normal retina, beautiful yellowish or orange. Uh -huh. This is the cross sectional or the structure of the retina to be like this. However, when we grow older, it have a bad substance deposit here under the retina, the yellow one. This we call it through sand or the bad substance. It's cause of the degeneration of the retina. This is a normal retina. You see, this is a bad retina, have a degeneration, have a yellowish or bad substance deposit in the retina. We call it true sand. Uh -huh. After it deposit, it will destroy the overriding retina, make it have a trophy or like this. Okay, this is the bad substance. When we opposite time to time, what happens is to destroy the retina overriding or make a new vessel. New vessel is very fragile and usually is result in the breathing later. Uh, this is a new vessel come from the bad substance. Uh, you see, it's a dry stage. When we induce the new vessel, we call it wet stage. Wet stage. Uh -huh. And it comes with the breathing. Final stage after the breathing, the our body will heal, but heal with a scar. Make your vision forever bad, not come back again. So we want to change, we want to prevent the uh, macular degeneration. What can we prevent? We have factors we cannot change. Aging, the gender, female, race, or eye color. This is the factor that we cannot change. The factor that you can change is first, it is smoking. Just like the cataract. Smoking is the more significant risk factor. More significant risk factor. It's more bad than alcoholic drinking. So smoking, re strongly recommend to stop. Uh -huh. Poor dietary, like to eat fat, to eat bacon, something like this. Obesity, sedative, not right to exercise, high blood pressure and sun exposure. <laughs> However, the most important is The symptom of the macular degeneration, you see, you cannot see it at the central, at the central. However, if you cannot see at the central, mean that oh, you have a wet stage at least with the macular degeneration, you see, or distortion of the central. However, in the early chain, you can see with the grid line, the line is not straight anymore. This is the early change of the macular, mean that you have to see the doctor. Okay, so prevention is stop smoking. Mm -hmm. Now we have the vitamin. Everyone have heard about the vitamin that like a booster of the eye or prevent the macular degeneration. Yes, we have many study that we have the vitamin that do delay the degeneration of the retina, like vitamin C, vitamin E, something like this, and we have a complex at all, like a vitalax, with all of this. However, everyone needs it. it. No, not everyone needs it. First, in the, in the study, the normal retina eat it, not prevent. <coughs> or the first stage, my stage, of the macular degeneration eat it, not delay. It's suitable in the patient is stage 2 or intermediate with the macular degeneration to eat the vitamin to prevent the progression. Uh -huh. We have many treatment of the to treatment the retina like we have our injection the, the drug into your eye or do the laser something like this into your eye uh -huh. or the one that have our Macula scar, we have to help him with the, uh, the lamp, with the glasses, something like this, or high magnification glasses, something, or the Google, like this, to help him to come back to see again. Okay. Next, the last thing, the third common cause is the glaucoma. Glaucoma. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, normal eye, we have a pressure. Pressure in the eye is very low and it can be not high because it has a drainage system at, in front of the eye at the angle like this. The, the water come here and go out here. We call it, this is a drainage angle in the eye. May we maintain the pressure. What happened to the glaucoma? Glaucoma is something happened in the drainage system. May the pressure rising. The pressure that rising first will destroy the optic nerve here. Optic nerve that destroy resolve in the glaucoma. What cause that the pressure that rising? First, we call it open angle. Mean that the trabecular mesh work uh, drainage system itself bad or broken. Uh -huh. Second, we call it cross angle. Mean that something block the entrance to the drainage system. We call it cross angle. Two different kinds need two different treatment. This is a normal disc. Normal disc should be healthy like this. And you see this in the white area in the overall leg. We call this cupping. Normal cupping should be like this. Uh, 0.4, something like this. 40%, you see. This is a normal optic disc head. Normal cupping should be only 40% in height. But in glaucoma, the cupping is big, just 80% or 70%. This means that, oh, you have the glaucoma. What is the cause of the glaucoma? Uh, the glaucoma usually not pain. Only the cross ankle sometimes pain. But usually most common is the open ankle is not pain. Early stage is like this. It's like have a bright spot here, bright spot here. Middle stage and the last stage you can See. When we fall with you are in the middle state like this, we cannot revert you to the norm or revert you to the early stage. Or when you or when we find out that oh you are already all advanced stage, we cannot revert you to the middle stage or early stage. All we can do is to stop the progression to stop in the advanced stage forever or middle age forever. However, in the early stage like here, you see, they have a slightly dry spot, black spot here. You cannot feel anything at all we, because we have two eyes. Two eyes complement each other. If you not come to screening or to do the visual field test like it, we not know that you have an early stage or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we strongly recommend to do the glaucoma screening in a patient like 50 years old, uh -huh. especially have a family, have a glaucoma patient, like a father, mother, and uncle, something like this, strongly recommend to do the glaucoma screening because glaucoma is a reversible change of the glaucoma, uh, of the optic nerve. Uh -huh. Now we have many treatments of the glaucoma. With the medication, which is more advanced, we have a single combination, two medication drug, and easy to use. Uh -huh. We have the laser if the medication cannot control it at all. This is the laser for the open angle and the laser for the cross angle. Uh -huh. We have a surgery. Surgery is the last choice of the treatment for the glaucoma to open the drainage tract of the water. Okay, that's it. This is the three most common eye problem in the elderly. Did you have any problem or any questions for me? Uh, we're very lucky because we've got more doctors here than the NHS. We've got Dr. Ian here who's going to talk about his experience with SuperSight. So I think what we might do is we might get up to, <coughs> to do his 10 minute talk, then we'll get both doctors back to ask any questions you've got about eyesight and supersight, etc. So, a great friend of the club has given quite a few talks here, race car driver, etc, etc. I can't do his bio justice. Uh, Dr. Ian, <laughs> part-time comedian. <laughs> Full-time comedian. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dr. Ian. Thank you very much. Let me put my white stick down. My son made for me.
Unfortunately, the management of the Holiday Inn wouldn't let me bring the Labrador upstairs as well. Hands up all those over the age of 45. A whole room full. <laughs> let me assure you that at your age, your eyesight is failing. It's just unfortunate that we are actually degenerating from the age of 14. So to get to your ages, you're lucky to be alive. I give you what happened with me as I grew older. When I was about 45, I noticed that I couldn't read without bringing my arms out further. Many of you feel that your arms aren't long enough. And the next thing was that I couldn't read unless it was brightly lit. And to read a map at night, I would have to take the map to the front of the car <coughs> where the headlights were on and try to see that. Eventually, putting the map on the ground and standing up here and looking. It also had social um, importance. I can remember I was actually taking a young lady out, and this was our first date. So I took her to an Italian restaurant, and the waiter came and asked me what did I want. And I wasn't sure because <clears throat> I couldn't read the menu. It was all nicely dark lit. So I said, I'll have a, a um, minestrone soup. And away he went. Two minutes later, he returned and said, the chef wants to know where did you see the minestrone soup on the menu because it isn't there. From there, I went on to contact lenses. Now, contact lenses, when you first put them in, are absolutely fantastic. I could read street signs, which I couldn't do before. The only problem was that looking after the uh, contact lenses takes quite a bit. You've got to take them out every night. If you don't take them out, you're going to get infection. So you can clean your hands, take the thing yeah. out, put them down, oh. and then of course you lose or drop one. You can't see without the contact lens and it's somewhere down there. And I can guarantee that as you shuffle around looking for it, you will stand on the wrong little bugger. So I sort of carried on trying to do the best. As you know, I uh, race motor cars. This is my 53rd year. Throw money, thank you. <laughs> it's an expensive sport. But if I was racing, I have to read the instruments. I also have to see down the track. And I couldn't do both of these things. So we tried having one lens for close up and one lens for far distance. This was not really successful. <laughs> at, at this stage, <laughs> at this stage, I met up with Dr. Somchai at my hospital, and he said, "You may be uh, okay for supersight." So. He examined my eyes. It takes an hour. Anybody here had super sight? There's one, two, three, any more? Goodness me, you better line up on Monday morning. But he said, yes, it's quite possible. So what it was like, um, I was admitted, you get a fancy uniform to wear, and 
I then was taken down to the theatre, where they have a thing like a dentist chair, which fully reclines, so that all you're doing is looking at the ceiling, and there's nothing there. The actual operation is totally pain-free. It's a strange situation, however, to know that somebody, the doctor, is fiddling around inside your eyeball. It's not painful. It's just a feeling. You know that they're doing something. It took 40 minutes for one eye, and then I lined up for the second. And that was another 40 minutes. Taken back to the ward, and I decided I would have a sleep. I woke up at 9 o'clock and turned on the television and for the first time for many years I could actually read the numbers on the remote. So I then was in as an inpatient until Dr. Song Chai came round. I am seeing all this. <laughs> so for the first six months, I would walk around patting my pocket to make sure I had my reading glasses. And I didn't need reading glasses. And today, it's now two years, I still occasionally actually feel that glasses are on my nose or I haven't got them. I don't need them. The biggest problem is the halos at night, and they are definitely there. But they're there as you get older anyway, and you get used to not looking at the headlights, but looking at the road. So, all right, that's my experiences with Supersight. You want me to finish here or tell a, tell a naughty story? <laughs> naughty story. <laughs> you, guys, you, you guys are so much more trusting of Ian than I am. <laughs> it's probably going to involve something you couldn't see on screen but now can, right? All right. How long is the naughty story? Three minutes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. <laughs> There's a condition that men get as they get older. It's called ED. You know what ED is? Erectile dysfunction. Willie falls over. Now, before the age of the blue diamonds, and you all know what the blue diamonds are, before the age of the blue diamonds, there was another drug. It was called alprostadil and it was fine but it was not taken by mouth. It had to be taken as an injection into the side of the penis. I can see a few of you withering as I watch. We didn't know in the early stages what the correct dosage was either. And my first patient who was <coughs> needed it was a new beaut Australian welder. Came to see me and said, Doc, you've got to help me. I can't do my homework. <laughs> so I said, do you want to try this? I don't know, we've never done one before. Yes, Tom, let's do it. So, we did it. Now, part of the treatment was they had to ring the next morning to tell me how it went. Next morning, he rings faithfully. I said, how did you go? Doc, it's the best route I've had in years. I said, well, that's good. He said, there's only one thing, though. I said, yes. He said, I think we should lower the dose a bit. I said, why? He said, well, they could have picked me up by the legs this morning and plowed the front yard with me. <laughs> and that's my naughty story.
stand, let's stand there, Ian. Uh, and Dr. Pundit, come back up and we'll do a Q&A with the two of you up here. So, uh, questions and answers for the doctors. I, oh, I just think that this was, Dr. Pundit did such a definitive job explaining the ISSH. Another round of applause for Dr. Pundit. <laughs> Yeah. Right, have we a few questions from the floor? Yeah. Uh, John, on your left. Dr. Ian. What does the super surgery cost? 200k. Both eyes? Both eyes. On your left here, Dr. Ian. On your left. On your left side here. How long are you hospitalized? Overnight. Wait for the mic. Could you please wait for the mic? I'll have your hand and your mic will come to you. <laughs> Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs> Dr. Songchai, uh, my hearing is not great, but your, your, uh, your um, present presentation was excellent. I heard every word you said. Um, very concise. Congratulations on that. Now, just one curious question. Now, I'm not being rude, but why are you wearing glasses? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. Uh, I have to tell you first, the uh, super size surgery is the uh, phagal emulsification with the multifocal lens. I do remember my, my, my slide show, what is the disadvantage of the, of the multifocal lens. Okay. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Dr. Ian, just a fun one. I've read your book, and I think it's one of the best books on Thailand. Uh, I, can, well, I think you've done another one. I read the first one. I'm not making a plug for you. I just thought you were very down to earth, but you are helping here today with your very good sense of humor. If you hadn't been a doctor, I think you could have been a comedian. <laughs> People say I am. Yeah. <laughs> Some more questions? Surely this gentleman down over here. here. On your right. Right over here, Ian. Hold, wait, till, wait till you got a mic. If you have the multifocal and become dissatisfied, can you then go and get the single focal, you know? We can, but it disaster and make your eye not perfect. Uh -huh. We can exchange the land, but results is not perfect. So, and I do advise you to shoot at the first time and not exchange it. Yes, I was just wondering what a proper pressure is for the eye. Oh, normal. Uh, in normal study, is below than 21. However, this is the 95% time. So that means that it's have a five percent time that the people have a over twenty one like a twenty three but no coma or below than twenty one but affect your optic nerve and make you a coma. However, the generalized of this equation is twenty one in the normal polarization. If anesthesia is needed for glaucoma surgery, is that general or local? Usually we do the local, uh -huh. however, sometimes the patient is so scared, so we can do it in the general anesthesia. Sure. <laughs> uh, back in 93, I had RK, or radio keratotomy, where you cut your eye, like spokes of the wheel, and that didn't turn out very well. Uh, later on in 99, I had LASIK, and that worked pretty, pretty good. And later on again, I had cataract surgery. So they did that, and my right eye was always my good eye, but after they did cataract surgery, my right eye is very bad now, and they said it's because the tissue in the back of the retina is wrinkled or something, and it distorts my vision. Is there anything that can be done about that? <laughs> uh, for, uh, could, could you get, sorry. Uh, uh, I have to tell you that 
Before we have a good eyesight, we need the whole eye good. The whole eye consists of the cornea, the lens, and the retina. When we were young, we do the LASIK or RK. We just change the shape of the cornea. So, you have good eyesight because you have lens and retina good. Next, you have a cataract. Mean this. And next, when you go aging, you may have this retinal degeneration. This is why you cannot see well. However, now the, the equation is you have a wrinkle of the retina. We can do the operation, but usually the result not as good as before. The retina is the top spot for the ophthalmologist. Must be some more questions for Doctor. Uh, doc, when you spoke about age-related muscular degeneration, you spoke about a dry stage and a wet stage. People who suffer with dry eyes in general, is that a sign? Not related. The background degeneration is here in the retina. Dry eye is here at the cornea and the conjunctiva. The dry eye is mean only that you feel dry, like a dry skin, something like this. It's not a big deal, just use artificial tears. Uh -huh. the different location. Doctor, I'm wondering, are there any um, particular foods that should be avoided or minimized for good eye health? Usually, we, we advise the, the general like a bacon, like a sausage, something like this. Uh -huh. That's not quite good because the obesity is the both lift factor for macular degeneration and the cataract. Your problem is the food that comes in green bottles. <laughs> <laughs> On your left here, please. Thank you. Good morning, doctors. Um, just in relation to the previous question there with dry eye, the um, if you have sojourns a syndrome specifically affecting the eyes, that is the dry eyes, is it uh, a serious connection there between these two issues? Yes, and, uh, I have to tell you before that the dry eye is not a big issue. That is the normal dry eye, like we have a dry skin, something like this. But in the Strogen syndrome, it is affecting on the rachamol gland directly, mean that the eye very severely dry. If you have severely dry, what happens next is the cornea. Normal cornea should be clear. You cannot see the cornea at all because the cornea is clear. However, if you dry, the cornea will be more hazy and hazy, and that may you lose the vision. So, all we have to do for the surgeon syndrome first, we have to try frequently use of the eye group and the eye gel. If it's not that good, next we have to do a pumping occlusion, obstruction of the drainage system of the tears. And if it not that good anymore. Usually it's very little. We have to uh, do your eyelid surgery to cover your, your cornea. Uh, what causes wet eye? Wet eye? Like... Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> wet eye? Oh, mean, you mean that uh, EP4 are crying? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, the crying have a two common cause. First is the irritation. Sometimes you have irritation, but you not feel irritating. But it's the lightly, it's made your eye respond with the tearing. So first we treat the irritation cause. And next second is if it's not that good, we come to the second is a blockage of the drainage system. We have to test that you have a blockage of the rachamol trunk system or you have a bad, something bad in your rachamol sac or not. If we do find that you have the broken of the rachamol drug system, we have to do the, do the surgery to open it up again. I, I thought he was going to say, when you asked what causes eyes and what are many eyes, I thought he was going to say marriage. So, <laughs> the, anyway, uh, or, uh, or actually divorce probably more accurately. Ren, the, uh, Ren. Yep. One more question here. No, no, I have a question. 
Sorry. <laughs> I'm not getting to it. The uh, retinal detachment, I know it's comparatively rare, but it's very serious. And I'm wondering how often is it wise to get tested for that possibility of retinal detachment? Yes. Uh, uh, retinal detachment is one of the elderly problems, but it's not common, so I'm not talking in this section. It is that when we grow older, they have a hole in the retina here, a hole in the retina. And if we have a hole in the retina, next we will get the retinal detached. It's very serious. Retinal detachment leads to the blindness. And even when we do the operation, the result is not good. As I told you that the retina is the top spot. When we do operation, the result is not good. But if we not do it, it will be forever blind. Uh -huh. So I advise you to over 60 years old to come over and check and open the pupil to see if you have a hole in the retina or not. If we can detect the hole in the retina, then we could do the laser with an easy job and to prevent further retinal detachment. Uh, retinal detachment. I think you mentioned uh, the vitamin supplement Vitalux, and I think you said we should not use it if we have not if we are all only in an early stage. Is that so? I'm in early stage at uh, glaucoma, but I use it. Should I stop using it or? Okay, uh, I have to tell you first. This is the vitamin uh -huh, that we mentioned that we call it Vitalux. We have so many kinds of, the, of, of, of this combination, but the most common in Thailand is the Vitalux. It has a study when is the benefit to take the vitamin. First, it's not benefit with the glaucoma. It's benefit only retinal degeneration or macular degeneration. And the further study is which thing that have to eat it and be benefit. And they found that normal retina not prevent the occurrence of the degeneration. My stage of the retinal degeneration not prevent the further development. Only the second, only the stage two of intermediate prevent the progression. Uh -huh. So could it be bad to use it? Should I stop using it then? Uh, one of the this advantage is only that if you have history of the heavy smoking before, uh, it can increase your risk of the lung cancer. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Dr. Yim, is my soup ready? <laughs> it's coming, they're <laughs> delivering it soon. <laughs> Referring to your story at the end of your talk, uh, give me a thought. Uh, it's probably an old wives' tale, but if a person does too much of the naughty things that you referred to, will that make your eyesight degenerate or make you blind? <laughs> you want a handy response? <laughs> Dr. Ian, after your operation, are you winning more races? Well, um, Yes, I have won races with my super sight. I had a very big accident at the end of last year where I went nose first into the wall and they say I survived 20G um, retardation. I wondered whether or not my lenses would pop out, <laughs> but they didn't. So, no, um, once you've got super sight, you can forget about it other than the halos. Dr. Ian, Dr. Bendit, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Um, I was a lucky lady getting my super eyesight surgery done in 2004, and I've been very happy ever since. But I was just wondering, is there any follow-up studies that have been done after receiving such surgery? I would like to know what the long-term um, prognosis are for suicide surgery. Okay. Uh, I, I, I talk in terms about the 
post-operative vagal emulsification. Okay, as I told you, super side is vagal emulsification with the multiple components. Normally, after we do the operation, vagal emulsification, we do six months later, only six months, and after that, it usually stable. No need for the follow-up. Are there any studies? <coughs> Are there any studies that you know of that have been yes. done? Yes, there are ongoing studies with things such as this. I would like to be part of it, if possible. <laughs> I don't know that the ongoing studies are being done in Thailand. They're more likely to be done in America. But um, you know, it's, it's something that, OK, you say you had it done in 2004. Right. Your lenses that you've got will last you until the day you die. That's what I was told, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about uh, recently the Thai Public Health uh, Authority issued a warning about a kind of hemorrhagic uh, conjunctivitis um, to the Season. Are you seeing more people with this kind of problem in your clinic? Yes, rainy season is like an epidemic season for the conjunctivitis. But don't worry, hemorrhagic conjunctivitis look very bad, like you will gonna lose your eye. But this is very good prognosis disease. Uh, usually, the patient get back to the normal in three or four weeks in a very severe hemorrhagic contact devices. Thank you, Doctor, for your talk. Since we live in a tropical country with very bright sunlight, would you recommend extensive use of sunglasses all the time? I, I've worn, I lived in Africa for many years, and I've lived here for many years, and I use sunglasses constantly. Yeah, uh, I have you to use the sunglasses when you go out uh -huh, of the of the something like this. Uh -huh. And nowadays it's very convenient. Uh -huh. Especially nowadays we have uh, glasses that can change the color. I uh, <coughs> I was uh, myopic for many years and I used contact lenses but they take a lot of attention and, and a lot of business. So in uh, 1991, uh, <clears throat> I had discovered that they were beginning a new operation called eczema laser, which I think is probably what they call LASIK right now. And uh, they used it on my right eye because it was worse than my left eye. And in 1991, I had like minus six diopters. I don't know what that is in terms of uh, you know, the, the two numbers that they usually use to, to check your eyesight. Uh, that was 1991, which means that 27 years later, today, uh, the last time I had my eyes checked, they were 2025. 20, now, uh, <clears throat> that still left my left eye as myopic, and I was faced with having to wear glasses when I read, but I hate wearing glasses, period. Because used to do that a lot when I was a kid. And so I discovered when I went to eye doctors, they said, don't worry about it. Just use what we call monovision, which means your brain adjusts so that my right eye sees distance just as well as most people. And when I want to read, I read with my left eye. And the brain makes the adjustment, which means that if you go through this, uh, monovision is not something to be afraid of. As I told, uh, I told you first, when in, the, in this hospital, when we design the patient with the monovision, mean that one dominant eye look far, at least dominant eye look near. Uh, from the study, not everyone can tolerate it with this. 60% uh -huh. can tolerate it with this, 40% cannot. So we have to test the patient with the contact lens for two weeks to see that they can adapt 
for the mono vision or not. Uh -huh. If you adapt for the mono vision, then can we go on with the mono vision? If after testing with the contact lens to we you say that it's horrible, then you can cannot. Uh -huh. But well, with my experience, I don't. I usually not advise the patient to do the mono vision. It's like a risk. Especially in your case, that your case do the LASIK before, make the measurement of the uh, lens power is more difficult than the virgin eye. With glaucoma, uh, you spoke about the black spot appearing uh, gradually. Are you aware of that in your own vision, or because it creeped up on you, you're not aware of it? Uh, what, what what is the black spot? Black spot mean mean the black spot from the glaucoma or black fine spot? Black glaucoma. Uh -huh. uh, glaucoma. In the early stage, you will not be aware of the black spot because you will you choose two eye. The two eye complement each other. Usually, the patient can detect it with the visual loss from the glaucoma. Is the intermediate stage, stage two or the severe stage? Are there any more questions, please? Behind you, Ren. Oh, the last one. I just want to thank you for your presentation. I, I duplicate what this gentleman said over here. Sometimes when we get uh, ties in here, Thai doctors in here to talk on the third week. Uh, some of us kind of cringe because the English and the presentation is difficult to follow, but yours was excellent. So I really appreciate how straight through the slides were, the presentation was clear, your English is excellent. Uh, I'd like to talk, yeah. I'd like to talk about cataracts a little bit. Uh, and I agree with you since it's a degenerative d disease that takes place slowly over time, you may not notice it. What, when will I when will I become aware that I need to get cataract surgery? That even if I have some kind of a loss of vision right now, it happens so slowly, I don't notice it. So will there be some key element, that is some key time where I say, I can't see this or I can't see that or it's getting real cloudy? What will be my, my key symptoms for maybe needing cataract surgery? Uh, I have to tell you that nowadays the cataract surgery is quite safe. We cannot say 100%, but 99% is safe. So when is you have to do the surgery? Is when you feel that the vision is bad and you want to improve it. If you think that now your vision is still quite good, no need to do the surgery. However, once you think that the vision is bad, you have to do it. Okay, uh, this does not apply to the generally Thai patient. Thai patient wait until it's very bad and then do the surgery. But usually when you fall out in the foreigner like this, you're very sensitive to the, to, to the bad vision. Well, I don't know that Dr. Pundit could have done any uh, presentation any clearer than he did. I thought it was really exceptional. A round of applause for uh, Dr. Pundit and his sidekick. And for posterity. We'd like you to uh, accept a small token of our appreciation for just a wonderfully clear talk and stuff. Yeah, come on the other side over here. Yeah. I know you've got a collection of these already, so. <coughs> and also, just wait, 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 what? Tanya, come up here and have a photo taken with us because Tanya is like, she works with me, she shouts me coffee every now and then. She's the reason we get such wonderful speakers here from the, from the hospital uh, with such great English and great ability to communicate. Somehow, it's, it's worth you knowing how some of these things evolve. I had a, a gentleman.